demander aux uns et aux autres de bien vouloir prendre place. Uh, welcome to this uh, wake keeping. Tonight we are happy to gather here and for, to begin with we are extremely sorry for all this uh, delay in starting this program. And we are meeting tonight here to celebrate a life. We are here to celebrate a life of a mother. We are here to celebrate a life of a grandmother. We are here to celebrate the life of a mother-in-law and we are here to celebrate the life of aunt. And I name Emilienne Chachem. And she passed away in July 16 of 2021 at Bantum, for those who are familiar with that um, city in Cameroon. And she was born in 1945. Tonight we are going to start the program by uh, this church service. And the church service is going to be directed by Pastor Leslie Klinger Smith. I hope I did pronounce it properly. Um, she's the pastor of St. Matthew Presbyterian Church, I believe, here in, in Maryland. So I'm going to hand over everything to Pastor for the beginning of this church service. Thank you. It's an honor to be here with you tonight. And I'd like to take turn your attention to the uh, programs that were passed out and invite you to join with me in the call to worship. I am the resurrection and the life, said Jesus. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And the one who lives and believes in me will never die. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we celebrate the gifts of life and redemption. Let us worship together with thanks and praise. Uh, in lieu of singing together tonight, I know that singing is so important in the community of faith, and as Jacobine and Guy know, we're trying to figure out in our church community how to capture the feeling that we get from singing, uh, but to do it safely in this age of coronavirus. And the latest CDC guidelines say that um, even the aerosols that are generated by singing can carry coronavirus and we do not want anybody to leave here sick tonight. So I'm going to suggest that just a, a, a couple of us sing Jesus Loves Me and the congregation hum along with us and if you feel moved to sway or clap or anything like that, that's fine. That doesn't carry coronavirus droplets. So feel free to express your love for God in that way. And uh, do hum along with me because I'm not a great singer. I'm going to be needing you all to help keep me on key, okay? We're all in this together. But uh, I know that we share the love of Christ and we want to proclaim that tonight. So. Um, Y'all can be, you want to help me out a little bit? <laughs> okay. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. And by your breath you gave us life. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, you tasted death for all humanity. And by rising from the grave, you opened the way to eternal life. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, you are the comforter of all who sorrow our sure confidence, and our everlasting hope. We worship you, O blessed Trinity, now and forever. 
Great God, before whom generations rise and pass away, we praise you for all your servants who, having lived this life in faith, now live eternally with you. Especially we thank you for your servant, Emily Ann Kuchachem, whose baptism is now complete in death. We praise you for the gift of her life, for all in her that was good and kind and faithful, for the grace you gave her that kindled within her heart the love of your dear name and enabled her to serve you faithfully. We thank you that for Emily Ann, death is past and pain is ended, and that she has now entered the joy you have prepared through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I've chosen two Old Testament readings tonight. I want to ask first, can you all hear me behind my mask? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, I, I, it's just so hard to feel so separated like this, but we want to keep everyone safe. I've chosen two Psalms to read tonight. I'm going to start with Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved, nor will the one who watches over you fall asleep. Behold, the keeper of Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is the shade at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Thanks be to God. And the second psalm I'd like to read is one that I, I think will be familiar to most, if not all of you. It's the eternal words of comfort sung by King David, the 23rd Psalm. If you'd like to say this along with me, I invite you to do so. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul and leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God for these promises that have been kept to Emily M. This is a, a wonderful gathering of fellowship, and I know that um, after the formal service is over that there will be uh, lots of stories shared and memories of Emily Ann. Uh, we probably could be here for a long time if everybody were to speak, but uh, just kind of to represent the um, memories that are in the hearts of all of us here tonight, Guy and Jacobine are each going to share a few memories of Emily Ann as the son and daughter-in-law. So Guy will start us off. Well, thanks for coming. I'm so glad, so happy to see people around me at this occasion to share the memory of my mother-in-law, my mom Jenny, with that champ in the end. It's so hard to be in this situation with emotion and be able to say something 
nice. But since we are here for a situation that is not really for happiness because of the loss, our prayer is everyone come here, spend time safely, healthy, and go back also to their own home. Said. Again, I don't have too much more to say, but one thing I want you to know, I would like you to understand that Mama Emilia, she wasn't only my mother-in-law, she was my mother. The way she was treated me and the way I, would, I used to treat her before she goes, and she went away. So, God is merciful. And I'm so thankful because we are the one who buried my mom in the end. We wish her all the best to rest, uh, to rest in peace where she is. We still love her. Thank you for everyone for coming. And, and I'm very, very proud to have you here around me at this uh, moment that is really, really sad. But God is on control. Thank you. I'm so sorry for not speaking my English tonight because I'm not that fluent in English. So, allow me to express myself my feelings in French because I know, I think I know that that language. Uh, bonsoir, mes frères, mes soeurs. Euh, je suis vraiment à la vie de vous avoir devant moi ce soir. Et qu'il me soit permis aussi. Je vous souhaite la bienvenue. Euh, ça permettait mon émotion. Euh, ma, ma maman, Emilia de Tchatcha, était une maman d'Iralé. Je ne sais pas si vous pouvez, si vous avez un candidat de famille où l'homme, où la femme joue seule, le femme. Le, le travail de l'homme et de la femme, c'est qu'on appelle ici Seigneur Mondeur. Because euh, mon père est mort depuis 1975. Donc, euh, elle, a, elle a entrepris de nous élever tous et dans l'esprit de, de sacrifice, du dynamisme et du partage. Euh, ma maman était une femme très stricte. Parce qu'elle voulait nous inculquer une éducation positive qui puisse réunir les uns et les autres autour d'un destin. Euh, ce que je peux, je peux encore dire ce soir, il a eu euh, un acte qu'elle a posé, j'étais en première à Paris. Elle est venue très tôt le matin me donner la pension, comme j'étais au collège tout le temps. Après, elle a été inscrite du lycée de Valenté, l'année d'avant. Elle m'a vu dans une condition qui n'était pas très catholique. Elle est rentrée avec la pension au village, à Valenton. Et le lundi, je suis venu la retrouver, la retrouver au collège. Elle a créé ma pension, elle a mis le reçu dans sa poche. À l'époque, c'était le pasteur Isaac Patomène qui était pasteur, qui était peut-être du collège, et il avait le, le surin général, je pense que j'oublie le nom. Tout le monde connaissait ma maman par cet acte. Il n'a pas assez de parents qui peuvent partir d'un village à 20 km pour se retrouver au collège à 7 du matin. Donc, elle me disait toujours que tiens, tu dois aller à l'école. Si tu ne tu vas pas à l'école, tu auras honte à voir tes amis. Et c'est ce que j'ai pu le dire, le tenir d'être parmi tant d'autres bonnes choses. Je ne serai pas assez long, parce que si je veux parler d'elle, ça me prendra 365 jours. Ce sera très long, on ne peut pas être ici. Mais je serai un peu bref pour vous dire. Euh, mes frères, mes, mes frères et sœurs, 
Soyez les bienvenus. Que le Seigneur qui vous a amené ici vous raccompagne chacun dans son domicile respectif. Merci. Soyez les bienvenus. Une fois de plus. Thank you. Our reading tonight is from the Gospel of John. And uh, I love these words because they remind us that there is room for everyone in the household of God. And that Christ went to make a place ready for us so that we could go there when it is time for God to call us home. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. And finally I turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. These are several um, selected verses from 1 Corinthians 15. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, but what is raised is imperishable. What is sown in dishonor is raised in glory. If it is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. If it is sown as a physical body, it is raised as a spiritual body. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor can the perishable inherit the imperishable. For this perishable body has to put on perishabil imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. And when this happens, the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, be immovable, always excelling in the works of the Lord. For we know that in the Lord, our labors are not in vain. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, join our hearts and our spirits in this time of sorrow. Help us to lean on each other and comfort each other so that we might know that you are present among us. We give thanks for the promises that we find in your word, for the sustenance they give us through this time of sorrow. Open our hearts and our minds tonight to the power of your word. I pray that the words from my mouth and the meditations within each of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight and bring honor and glory to your name. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I want to thank Guy and Jacobine and Anya and each one of you 
for the honor of being here with you tonight. It is a privilege to honor the memory and celebrate the life of someone important to all of you. We give thanks for a life well lived, a woman who touched so many other lives with her wisdom, her kindness, and her unconditional love. I wish that I had had the chance to personally know Emily Ann Cachacho, for she sounds truly extraordinary. But I'm blessed to know some of her family here in Silver Spring. I understand that she was a woman of deep and abiding faith. She set a wonderful example for her children and her grandchildren. Whether we knew her personally or not, we are all better off that she lived on this earth, that she existed, that she was one of us. Losing someone we love is never easy. I would imagine that it's even harder in this case when those of you who had family ties and ties of friendship to Emily Ann are separated by so much geographic distance. It's a sacred moment to be with someone as they transition from this life to the next. And Emily Ann's family and friends here in the United States missed out on that experience. Plus, travel has been so restricted for the last 18 months because of COVID-19. So for many of you, it could have been a long time since you had seen her. So that's another reason why we come together tonight. And it's important for those of us here to mark her passage and give thanks that she was with us for as long as she was. Jacobin wanted me to make sure that I included the title, the French word maman, on the program. Biological children. She cared for all with whom she came in contact with the steadfast loyalty of a mother. We like to think of God as sometimes a father, sometimes a mother, a parent shielding and protecting us, who will even suffer on our behalf if necessary. That was how she was for her immediate family, as well as her extended family and wide circle of friends. When someone dies and they're far away from us, who we perhaps have not seen in person in a long time, the promises of our faith and of the reunion that we can look forward to in the presence of God, those promises become even more important for us. We claim those promises again tonight. We rely on them to reassure us that even though we grieve, Emily Ann is at peace. She is healthy and whole once again after the aftermath of a devastating stroke over a year ago. Emily Ann is healed now of any illness or injury or wound that prevented her from living life joyfully and being the shining light that God intended for her to be. Not only is she well again, she is her very best self. The parts that we remember with the most love and the most gratitude. The New Testament book of Hebrews tells us that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We were not able to walk alongside Emily Ann as she made her final journey, but we can be assured that she is at rest in the arms of her Creator. Her suffering has ended. It is the same faith in the redeeming life and love of our Savior Jesus Christ that will sustain us through this difficult season of loss and sorrow. Because Christ, it is not the end for any of us. When and how is not for us to know, but we will see her again. Jesus promised to prepare a place for us. 
and to take us to himself, so that where he is, there we will be also. Those words from the Gospel of John are among my favorites in all of Scripture. And I think one of the reasons why Jesus' words speak to me so strongly is that I love this imagery of a house. A house with many dwelling places. Other Bible translations say room or even mansions. Can you even visualize a, a house that large? We think of one mansion as an enormous palatial space. And yet God's house contains a multitude of mansions. I can't really even visualize it, but what it says to me is that there's room for everyone in the dwelling place of God. Our God prepared a place just for Emily Ann and welcomed her on July 16th, 2021. This world is not a permanent home for any of us. I don't say that with any intention to make us fixate on the inevitability of death. I say it to remind all of us that death is a part of a cycle, a passage from this life to the next. And Jesus has told us that what comes next is even better and more fulfilling than what we have experienced here. Paul said this beautifully in the letter to the Corinthians when he wrote, we will not all die, we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, our bodies will put on immor immortality and death will be swallowed up in victory. Our grief is real and it's understandable. This is a sad occasion. No one should ever feel like it's not okay to be sad when someone we love dies. Because the reality of death is that we will not see that person again in this life. They won't be present to us in the same way that they were before. But my prayer for each one of us is that even through tears, even in sorrow, we can feel an underlying sense of peace. That same peace that Jesus gave to his disciples. That prayer comes from an assurance that death for us is not the end. It is a new beginning, a pathway to life abundant and life eternal. The sorrow for Emily Ann hurts, and it will for a long time. But as the days go by, I hope that those who love her can gradually find your way to a feeling of settled thankfulness that she was part of our lives, part of the human family. Over time, maybe thoughts of her will bring a smile or a laugh instead of tears. There will always be an ache, an emptiness where she used to be. But may that be balanced with memories of good times shared together and gratitude that God gave her to us. May we honor Emily Ann's life by living well ourselves, by treating others with kindness and respect, and trusting in the words of our faith and the word made flesh, Jesus Christ. It is our faith that will sustain us through this season of grief, and that in God's time will lead us safely home. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I don't know if anybody knows this closing song, but if you do, feel free to hum it along with me again. And uh, then we'll close together with a prayer that will end with the Lord's Prayer. I chose this song because uh, from what I learned about Emily Ann, she herself was kind of a sanctuary type person, someone that people felt safe with and loved by. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. 
pure and holy, tried and truly a living sanctuary for you. Let us pray. You have shared our life we ask you to be with us during this time of sorrow and grief. You are the source of all healing. We pray that you will heal our wounded hearts tonight. In Jesus Christ, you heal the sick and mend the broken. Come to us as a sign of healing and forgiveness and of the fullness of life you give. By your Spirit, entrust with us the ministry of compassion, that we may each know your healing touch and be made whole. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of all creation. We praise you for the abundance of your blessings. Especially we thank you for your servant, Emily Ann Kuchacho. To those who ask, give love. To those who seek, give faith. To those who knock, open the way of hope. Help us to serve you in the power of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we join our hearts and voices and pray together now the words that he taught us long ago, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We go forth from this place tonight to do so with renewed spirits and renewed commitment to living the gospel of Jesus Christ, to loving as we have been loved and serving as we have been served. And I promise that the grace, mercy, and peace of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is with us this day and in all the days to come, and it will see us through. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. To be taken up, uh, I think some of the children especially have, uh, have gifts to bring. So those who uh, want to participate in the offering, uh, the children will be coming around with pans that you can uh, put your offerings in. Gracious God, we give thanks for the generosity that resides in each of these hearts. We pray that we will give to you as generously as you have given to us. May we always be grateful for our blessings and may we share what we have so that the suffering of our neighbors might be relieved. Take these gifts, use them, and use each one of us to create the world as you have envisioned it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pastor Leslie for, for the service tonight. And we want to thank all of us for being here. Um, the few things that we um, can pick up from what we heard is that uh, from Book say her mother was someone who was really... Uh, school oriented uh, she wanted him to go to school and I think he went to school and he can be proud of of himself now and if mother was still there mother would still be proud of him uh, from Pastor Leslie um, we can keep up that um, Mama Mama Leslie want us to Mama Emilian want us to leave a a good life and that would be the only way to uh, celebrate her life and 
And I want to say, uh, let's not continue to be sad about this. Let's celebrate her life. She lived a, uh, she had a well-lived life, and we should all be happy. Uh, one thing I do want to say is that in most cases, we always want to be the one to bury our parents. The reverse is usually very, very heartbreaking. And um, we'll have a chance now to be the one giving a last, uh, last, a final goodbye to her mother. And then um, my bell will also have that chance to be the one to give a final goodbye to her mother-in-law. And they should be happy for that, and we should all be happy for that. Uh, a little bit of cleaning uh, for those to those who just join us. The bathroom is on the when we exit this hall and go straight to your right. The bathroom is right there, so we know about some. I don't know how to say that. Name. I don't know the right word in, in English. Lamentation. Oh, uh, and traditional dance. So, and that was the next uh, item on the on the on the agenda. But for now, there are a few people who are going to say some few words. Um, the first will be uh, Representant de la Famille Barante. Uh, will be the first. Uh, when the time is appropriate, you will come up. The next will be the Famille Banyu. Uh, I hope I pronounced it right. Famille Banyu. And I, I believe the last will be Le Club de Sage. So at this time, I would like to invite uh, Representant de la Famille Bamante forward, please. Ngola. 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 This is a difficult time uh, for someone to think that uh, he cannot anymore talk to a uh, mother. It's very, very tough. And uh, so tough when you receive that, uh, that news through the phone. You know, and you have a lot of questions in your mind. And, uh, but the family, Banyun, who are here, who give you that privilege to talk on, on their behalf, uh, is just asking the family and the beautiful wife to continue to be strong, to continue to be strong because there are a lot of people who need uh, your support back home. It's, it's, it's difficult, but at the end, we, we think that uh, we are coming here to, uh, not to try, but to celebrate this mom who was great in love. And coming together, that's the sign of love that we are building here for uh, many, many years. Uh, and coming here to support him, I think you, you understand that he's not alone. Now, this family is here to, uh, uh, to show that love, because he is part of uh, this great family, that we will continue to support him uh, until uh, he finds himself a world of relief. Uh, about uh, this uh, issue. I don't want to say a lot because of the pastor and uh, many people already say uh, big thing about uh, our love mom who, who were doing the same thing that we came here to do, come together to support uh, someone who need help. So thank you so much and uh, have a wonderful evening. We have mouth, but we know that he, he will have a lot to do in Cameroon. Uh, you know, uh, we, we prepare, the family prepare something uh, for him uh, to hold because uh, we need that. Then I will call him. Good. Uh, yeah. okay. Celebrate her life, he said. And we are coming to support this family, he said. And the same in the same um, in the same way, we are all here to support you and we will continue to support you. We are here, we know what it takes when you have when you have someone dying home and you have to travel from here going home. We know what it takes. 
And we are praying that each and one of us will try to bring you their own support on their own way. The next, the next speaker tonight will will be a representant, a representant du club des sages. Bonsoir. Moi, c'est c'est triste d'être ici, mais je vais d'abord commencer par remercier la famille et tous ceux qui ont honoré à ce cri de douloureux. Monsieur Ketia est l'un de nos membres. Monsieur Guy Ketia, nous faisons ce, cette, nous avons un petit groupe dénommé euh, Club des Sages qui venait de prendre lieu il n'y a pas longtemps et j'ai l'honneur d'être accompagné du président. Quand cela me tient, Guy, maman, je sais de là où elle se trouve qu'elle est fière de toi. Si nous sommes là aujourd'hui, c'est pour te reconforter et nous savons que ce n'est pas facile surtout de là où nous nous trouvons. Bonsoir à vous, bonsoir à tout le monde. Um, je ne dois pas être long, mais ça doit être bref. Uh, Monsieur Kikecha, bien histoire, on est... Il est vraiment bizarre. <rire> En fait, je voulais dire que nous, le, le, on, on a préparé un petit paquet pour, euh, pour vous qui a déjà été envoyé électroniquement. On voulait juste euh, s'assurer que tu as reçu. <rire> en fait, euh, c'était juste pour s'assurer que tu as reçu le, le paquet qu'on a envoyé. Allez, si tu l'as reçu, merci. Merci encore à tout le monde d'être là et euh, bonsoir. Oui, parenté.
the last time I saw her I was like 13 years old, and that was like eight years ago. And it's really hard for me to just know that she's gone already. Um, grandma. Watching the bus, I just want to say I love you. And that I'm gonna make you proud. I'm gonna keep going for you. I will do this for you. Thank you. To Pastor Leslie, she's going to bless the food that we're about to eat tonight. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this feast of which we are about to partake. We pray that this food will strengthen and nourish our bodies and that this time of fellowship will strengthen and nourish our spirits so that we will be better able to serve you. We pray that we will be compelled to share what we have so that the suffering of others might be alleviated and that all that we do and say might be for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> dames qui sont responsables de, euh, de ce, ouais, la gastro derrière la barre de bien vouloir débarrasser le couvert pour nous, s'il vous plaît.
Tschüss, Sarah.